Hi, I'm John, the Interest-Free Currency Engineer, and today we're going to take a look at how the community currency system is being used by a town in Brazil. And uh, they're doing it pretty well. They're using paper currency, which is really smart and uh, saves on uh, transaction costs. And even though Japan says they are, have more people who are technically integrated into community currencies, they aren't using paper, except for the stamps in that one little town. They're using electronic transactions, which may not be as efficient for small transactions. Who knows? But this is the story out of a Brazil slum that's saving in itself. And all you can ask yourself is, they've been going for 10 years. How come their neighbors haven't wised up to? Are politicians all just that stupid? Or is there something bigger preventing them from following these good examples? Here's a story about Fortaleza, Brazil from the Reuters UK. Reuters UK, May 12th, 2009. Brazil slum, a beacon for economic independence. By Stuart Grudgings. Fortaleza, Brazil, May 12th, Reuters. At a time when big financial firms are reviled by many for leading the world into crisis, a ramshackle bank on a pothole street has lessons in economic independence that are catching on around the world. With its own money, the Palma, that is trusted and heavily used, many of the 32,000 residents of the Palmeiras slum in the northeastern Brazil city of Fortaleza go days without seeing or using Brazil's national currency. Backed by the community bank that hands out zero interest loans in the currency, the 11-year-old Palma is accepted by businesses throughout the area whose residents credit it with transforming the local economy. It has spawned more than 30 linked community banks from the Amazon region to the southeastern Espirito Santo state, up from just two in 2005. All right, the biggest let's network in the world, except for Japan. And lately, Palmeiras residents say the Palma has shielded them from the crisis fallout spreading through Latin America's biggest economy, where millions of poor struggled to get access to credit even before the financial turmoil struck. The Palma has helped people get over this crisis. The loans have helped give, uh, have helped give people continuity, said Juan Pereira de Sousa, the 46-year-old owner of a local supermarket that has expanded in recent years thanks to loans made in Palmas. It's not total protection, but it's very significant. Well, it's the same thing as Ithaca Hours, except Ithaca Hours is a dinky toy, and this is big. Experiments in local currencies and trading schemes, whose backers say they work by keeping wealth within the community and strengthening local ties, have been around for decades. Dinky toys, though. <laughs> but the crisis has sparked a new wave of interest in such models as communities, including in the United States and Europe, seek to insulate themselves from the credit crunch. I think it's like a backstop. If everything falls down, what would be left with? said Mary Fee, Secretary of Britain's Let's Link UK network of local exchange trading systems. I met Mary in my 1998 tour. She said there'd been a surge in interest from Britons in recent months, including from those who had lost their jobs and were seeking another way to sell their skills. Crisis hit communities across the United States are creating or reviving their own currencies, from the plenty in Pittsburgh, North Carolina, to the cheers that is accepted by some businesses in depressed Detroit, in a throwback to currencies known as scrip, used during the Great Depression. The benefits of local currencies could be more psychological than economic, some skeptical economists say. It's not financially possible for everyone to survive. How can you do that? Tim Hartford, author of The Undercover Economist, book that explains the economics behind everyday life, said any extra money spent on local goods instead of imports would likely be cancelled out by the foil, fall in spending on community goods by outsiders. Yeah, but they don't have to ship their stuff to us, and we don't have to ship their stuff to them, and we all save on shipping costs if we buy locally, Mr. Economist. So, if some, if it makes people feel good, or if it saves them, makes them think about local products, that's great, he said. I just wonder if the energy it takes to set up could be used for other local projects. Oh, it takes so much energy to set up a bank of poker chips. 
Oh, so much energy. How can they possibly do it? Excluded from credit, yet the Palmeira slum, which was formed by residents of an uprooted fishing community in the 1970s, appears to be a model of success. It was impossible to find skeptics on a recent day as customers lined up at the bank's three cashier stands to take out Palma loans and make deposits. As in most other such systems, the Palma has a value at parity with the national currency, so it's a let, but it's probably connected to the hour somehow, but can only be used within a certain area. Bull, I bet you all the neighbors accept it because they know it's good money, just like in Ithaca. Local retailers offer a 5% discount for purchases in Palmas, nice but unnecessary, and say that about 30% of their sales are now made up in the currency. We found the reason we're poor is not because we don't have money, but that we were losing our money. For everything we wanted to buy, money was going outside the neighborhood, said Joaquim de Mello, the bank's general manager. The crisis has shown that big, all-powerful banks without social control don't work because they exclude a lot of people who don't have access to banks. That is especially true in Brazil due to double-digit interest rates and lack of bank branches in poor areas such as the northeast and the vast Amazon region. Brazil has less than one bank branch per 8,000 people in 2007, fewer than in 1980s, the government's Institute of Applied Economic Research said in a study released in April. Since the crisis arrived last year, credit offers made by the Palmas Bank have risen 15% as residents lost their jobs and were cut off by traditional banks, the Melo said. Isn't it nice to have an interest-free bank branch ready to go in your community when you lose your job? A decade ago, residents had to leave Palmeiras to get a haircut because of lack of local business. But the combination of a local currency and available credit has helped hundreds of small businesses get started, they said. Hmm. So, they're just too busy to have trouble with their little chip system, eh? People outside don't have the same luck we do, said Moam Alves de Sousa, a 53-year-old who runs a corner bar with her sick husband after counting out her last hundred Palmas loan. She uses Palmas loans to fund her local shopping, while a loan from the bank in the national currency has helped her son expand his tire fixing business next to the bar. Stores throughout the community sell locally made products such as detergents with the Banco Palmas brand. Local production keeps youths out of uh, trouble and helps her business by improving security, said supermarket owner De Sousa. The enthusiastic DeMello has an ambitious target of 1,000 community banks in Brazil by the end of 2010, and they're interconnected and they can intertrade. There is enormous demand, he said. Same in California and all the other broke states in the U.S. His advice for Wall Street? Go local. <laughs> no, because Wall Street's going to get busted out. The crisis is producing an error because banks are joining together, he said. The lesson of crisis is that you have to decentralize and get closer to the people. Well, they can't do that because they're loan sharks. The more you merge, the more you discriminate and reject. And that's wonderful because more people are getting off the sinking orthodox ship of banking and getting onto the Unilet's time-based lifeboats. So, uh... Editing by Philip Barbara Thompson Reuters, 2009.